here's a little video where I show off some of the interesting features and stuff of my 1988 Fiero's interior. Now I've done some cleaning out and made it look more clean. There's obviously a bunch of um, stuff that needs some work, but I bolted everything down here so it's all in place, apart from the shift boot, which is kind of broken. But everything's all here. Most of the buttons are here. The steering wheel's pretty good. Handbrake works. Seats are nice. There's some damage, but I can always reposter them. But this is a Fiero formula, which was essentially the performance parts, like the V6 and the, and the revised suspension, but in a base model package. So it has the um, notch back. But some interesting things. I have... Um, Everything in here is manual. You have manual mirrors, manual locks, and manual mirrors. No, manual door windows, not mirrors. I said mirrors. But when you get inside here, you notice just how low you sit in this interior. Your legs are pretty stretched out, and you're pretty low to the ground. Like I can almost touch the grass right now. You also got your climate control here, your low high, your buttons which almost work like a blender how they kind of stay in place this one fell out when I first got the car your hot and cold adjustment you have a glove compartment not an actual box it's like a little um pocket your vents they can move around and twist your locks this way when they're when it's just black that's locked when you have it where the red shows that's on lock your steering wheel. There was a couple different steering wheels for the Fiero. There was a four spoke with a round center. There was a free spoke with the GTs and some of the earlier ones that I've seen. And then there was this one, which has like a little box in the middle of your side buttons for the horn. I personally really don't like the way this looks that much, so I will be changing it out for a better one. But first I need to get the car running. One cool thing is it has it does have a lock. You have to press this little tab down and it has the key. No power steering either. So you're doing all the steering work yourself. It's you moving these wheels. It does have height adjustment. So you can adjust the height of the steering wheel, so that's nice. It's This is a manual. So you're reshifting for your own gears. That's fun. Up here you got your battery amperage gauge and your oil pressure. Here's where you have your speedo tack, your fuel and your temp, water temp. But those are currently outside the car. Above here, where there's some other crap that I... Like a, this seat cover kind of came with the car. I took it off. Those things don't really like it. I got the gauges right here. Got your little tachometer. Your center gauges with your fuel and temp. And some other parts. And the, speed, and the speedo is right around here. Currently has 109,000 on the clock. Which is... Yeah, it's pretty high mileage, but... For all the cars that we have, it's not that much. In here we got, of course, all the other stuff, but that's that's for another video. On the other side, it's just a passenger footwell section. Nothing really do much to say. You got your um, manual adjustment for the backrest. There's that. Lots of legroom, I will say. It's you can be pretty comfortable on a long trip because you have your pretty legs are pretty stretched out. And of course, you can put the C all the way back. So yeah, you can be pretty comfortable in this car. I mean, yeah, it's a small car, but they already made good use of all the space that they had. Also, your engine's behind you, so it makes sense you'd have some good leg room. But yeah, up here you got your center rear compartment. There's just some papers and crap in there. Probably stuff from the previous owner. Your dashboard, you have these like little um, cloth things. I don't know what they're for. You have your vents right here. I believe those are your defrost little window vent. Same store here where you got your um, locks and your mirror. But this mirror, and but this mirror right here, this one doesn't have a little, this one does not have a little thing. This one's a, where you kind of got to um, move it around yourself. It's a little old, so the mechanism is a little bit stiff. It has been, this car has been sitting for a little bit, so... The interior was a lot more dirty when I first got it, so I've been doing some cleaning. Oh, this was like disassembled. It was all like laying around everywhere. I got it mainly together. 
day. Um, shift boot is a bit damaged. It does have some problems, like a lot. Of, some of the pins are gone. They just snapped off. There's also a little um, hole right here. And there's kind of a mechanism right there. And there's even a piece of chapstick down there. I'm gonna have to get that out of there. I don't want to be touching that though. That seems a bit disgusting. Up here you got two ashtrays. I don't actually have the tray part. I think those are lost somewhere. I have no idea. They didn't come with the car. And this car does not have the um, like a GT had like little LED lights and like buttons for the um, some of these adjustments. This one just has regular switches or like levers more to adjust. And what I love is if you do this, you can actually hear like this mechanism inside the dashboard when you do that. But that's all your, um, this is what the passenger side is pretty simple, but it's in better condition than it was. Most cars I see like have cracked up dash stuff. This one's all right, but it could be a lot better. There is some deformation. The driver's side has a lot of deformation with that um, top panel. Because the way they mounted the mirror, it kind of pushes up a little bit. Because I think GM kind of cheaped out, just like put it right there. I'm not really caring that much. Right here, you got your turn signal. They do cancel. That's your, some of your mirrors, your mist. This is your lights, that's your parking. That's your parking light. And then that's where your headlights are. This is your high-low beam. The wires are attached, it's just the actual switch pod isn't attached. Similar to this side where you have four, I think these are either T10 or T20 Torx holding these in. I got like a bag of all the hardware because I found all the bolts and bits laying over all in here. Your handbrake, let me show you the handbrake real quick. Your handbrake is cool because when you engage it, it already is engaged, but as you can see, you have, when you disengage it, you press the button to put it down, and then you engage it again, but it falls back down. That's so you can enter easier. Since it's on this side, and, then to, and disengage it, you just pull it up and you have to press the button. That disengages it, and then engage it again. Press it up, and then you can put it back down. So that's pretty cool. Also, to engage the wheel lock and to put the key out away, you can't take the key out unless it's in the all back position. You gotta press this little thing down and put the key like this. That locks the wheel, and you can take the ignition key out. It's a little um, sticky, so. But there's, that's how you take the key out. You can just do it like this without doing that. When you disengage it, but to engage the lock, you have to press this down and do it to engage it. But that's pretty much all the interior there is. There's also, you can also, of course, move the back of the seats. And back there, just some carpeting and stuff. I cleaned back there too. But that's pretty much all there is. Not much, but there is a lot of stuff that needs fixing. But overall, that's what the interior of a 1988 Fiero Formula, at least mine, looks like. Uh, that's just a little video I want to make, and I'll see you next time.